Hi there, welcome to this demo of my first time call HDA. Here's the node and its parameters. And the point of a first time uh, call is to remove geometry which falls outside the frame of a camera and therefore keep the, the scene as lightweight as possible. <clears throat> so uh, before I show you um, how I've used it in this demo uh, and, and how it works, I just want to give a quick shout out to 9 to the Animation uh, Studio focusing on um, non-photorealistic rendering styles and I've had the pleasure of working with them for the past uh, months and what we are looking at here in the viewport is one of the one of their scenes so um, I greatly appreciate the courtesy of letting me use it for this demo um, I've linked to them in the description do look them up okay so in this particular example I have some geometric representations of god rays kind of shooting inward from the the glass panes and here's the the node graph that i have uh, which takes care for uh, basically generating those uh, immediately after object merging the glass panes and scattering some points and then of course removing uh, everything that falls outside um, outside my uh, picture frame uh, outside the camera frame <clears throat> so if i lock the camera and i move it a little bit here you see what i'm talking about so there's no uh, no ribbons being no ribbon being uh, kind of spawned from outside uh, the the frame and thus uh, uh, keeping the keeping the scene as interactive as possible um, I'm using the, the geometric um, god rays mostly for previews eventually I'll replace them with a VDB so with that said let's have a look at the controls uh, and in this case I'll, I'll just hide everything else so we can really focus on um, how the frost on curl works and um, what each one of these parameters does. So let's look at the guide representation of the frostum, which is this blue um, blue lines here. Um, you have it as uh, obviously available as guide, but um, this is also output on output two as geometry. So that's the geometry which serves as guide, um, which is fully UV'd. And you have the option of outputting only the near and far planes for the whole frostum. Uh, the UVs for the near and far clipping planes will always respect um, your um, uh, aspect ratio. So even if you decide to crop, the UVs will also be cropped. <clears throat> if I template the points for a second here, you will probably understand better uh, what's going on as I'm uh, cropping uh, left, right, top or bottom. <clears throat> the overscan parameter uh, will basically scale proportionately up and down. If you look through the camera, uh, you will see uh, we will see that taking place, taking effect. <clears throat> um, so you also have the window offset uh, left and right and top and bottom and so these these parameters um, as well as the uh, z near and z far clipping planes which you which obviously you can move in and out uh, these parameters also exist on camera objects so you can just copy and paste relative references in here and thus match the match the camera object to the sub there are two modes of operation call basically what we're looking at and mask mask is the default and it writes out an integer attribute called mask um, it can write it either to the points of the primitives depends on what you're running over um, and finally in here there is um, an, the option to write out the z depth so that's ndc z the z uh, component and to take the absolute values that's what i've done here uh, so what use might I have for an attribute uh, uh, such as this one? Well, in this case, I'm uh, basically normalizing that um, Z depth and then using it as the, the, the amount uh, attribute for uh, linear interpolation. And I'm in interpolating between uh, a certain value for a P scale and uh, the same value but scaled um, differently. 
so multiplied by something. And so the result of that is um, a variation, a variation based on uh, the z depth. In this case, um, the rays which are far from the center are much thinner than the rays which are closer to the sensor. Uh, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, it's available on Gumroad. Um, feel free to just crack it open, uh, study what I have in here. I think the frostum geo wrangle, which generates the, geom uh, the, the geometric representation of the frostum, is quite interesting. So uh, hopefully we'll uh, pick a thing or two, learn something from it. I hope you find it useful. And uh, if you have any questions um, or comments, uh, feel free to just uh, reach out. Cheers.